WCBI News at 10 starts now. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Quentin Smith. A vote on what could become the most restrictive abortion law in the country is on hold tonight after anger erupts in Alabama's state Senate chamber. Rashad Hudson of CBS affiliate WIAT has the latest. This all happened after lawmakers voted to strip an amendment that would have made abortions legal in the case of rape or incest. But it's what happened in that chamber behind me that left some lawmakers furious. He did chat. not make a motion. He made a motion to table. What was the motion made? The, the motion. No motion was made. You just excuse me, Senator Chambliss. No you're recognized. I don't care what the chair is about. Thank you, Democratic Senator Bobby Singleton was furious on the Senate floor after an amendment was stripped that would have made abortions legal in the case of rape or incest. And what we saw was, and I'm, I'm standing at the mic, I didn't even hear the motion even come out of the senator's mouth before the lieutenant governor had started gaveling it through. He rushed it before the man even get the motion out of his mouth. Senator Singleton calls the move by the lieutenant governor unfair. In a statement from Lieutenant Governor Will Ainsworth reads, quote, since taking the gavel, I have worked hard to follow both the spirit and letter of the Senate rules, and I will continue that practice as long as I am presiding officer, end quote. According to Senate Pro Tem Del Marsh, these powers belong to the Lieutenant Governor. I think that people maybe had their guard down a little bit, didn't, maybe didn't expect a voice vote, uh, but he has every right to do that, and that's what he did, and that's what happened. Wednesday's Senate Judiciary Committee, led by Republican Senator Cam Ward, approved the amendments. Today, however, I do not think the process in which we just tabled that amendment is a fair standpoint of wow. Lawmakers plan to return Tuesday to take a vote on the partial ban abortion bill. Clay County deputies find a wanted man this afternoon, and he could soon face charges. Sheriff Eddie Scott says 18-year-old Kevin Perkins Jr. is in custody. Now, initially, deputies wanted to talk with Perkins about an ongoing investigation. At this time, Scott is not releasing the specifics about the case. Formal charges could be filed on tomorrow. Now, of course, we're going to continue to follow this developing story and bring you more details as they become available. Well, many parts of our viewing area receive rain today. We're going to go ahead and send things over to meteorologist Jacob Riley, who's standing by with a first look at our forecast. Jacob. Hey there, Quinn. So a lot of heavy rain today. All of that has pushed on off to our east now. We are watching these storms back down across southern portions of Texas. That's what's going to move in overnight, late tonight, bringing us more rain tomorrow. We're going to stay mostly dry tonight. Later on tonight into the early morning hours of Friday is when you can expect those showers and storms to return. They're going to last all the way through your Mother's Day morning. Mother's Day afternoon, though, things will begin to dry out, Quentin. I'll have more on just how much rain we can see coming up a little later in the show. Thanks so much, Jacob. An Amory High School senior is making a name for himself in sports, academics, photography, and volunteer work. The high achiever has become an inspiration and motivator for both teachers and fellow classmates. Our Ali Martin has more with the star student and how a major hobby led to a transformation in his life. As he walks the halls of Amory High School, Luke Flippo is greeted by fellow students. Soon he will trade the halls of Amory for the Ivy of Yale University. I just stuck to my passions and told the stories to people around me as well as I could. That's how I still got accepted into Yale. His journey to Yale started nonchalantly. Before his sophomore year, Luke was a self-described introvert, content to go to school, do his homework, and keep to himself. But all that changed when he was asked to take some photographs for the school. The yearbook asked me to cover a basketball game. My mom was a scrapbooker, so she had really good cameras. Um, I went to that game and took the photos, and I said, okay, well, maybe they want to see these. They look kind of good. I over-edited them a little bit because I was just trying to make them look cool. And I released them, and the whole entire team loved it. Before long, I had the football coach asking me to travel with them, and the basketball coach, of course, asked me to travel with them. And I was on soccer. I was on archery. I was on slow-pitch softball, which became a huge sport for me. Luke's photographic skills helped him make many friends and come out of his shell. He now competes in photographic technology, on-demand video contest, and even public speaking. Luke is also a champion tennis player and volunteers at nursing homes. 
but his passion is photography and being able to tell a story through images. People see my photos and I say, oh, well, you're a really good sports photographer. But I like to think that sports is just a platform for everything we see in life. You go into a sports game and in just an hour and a half, you see failure, you see success, you see resilience. And I think those are your topics that every human faces. Luke attended a boarding school for a brief time, but felt it wasn't for him. He says he learned from that experience. And although he is leaving Amory High School, his influence will remain. A new digital media course has been dubbed the Luke Flippo class. This year we had 15. I think next year we've got uh, 35 signed up wanting to take it. And it's something that's really growing um, in the kids and in our society as well. We're becoming more digitally oriented and, you know, most of our textbooks are online and everything else now. So, you know, and Luke's helped bring everything together with all of that. Luke plans to work hard at Yale, where he will major in American Studies or Global Affairs. His long-term goal is to be an international journalist in war zones, telling stories through his photos. In Amory, Allie Martin, WCBI News. Now, Luke Flippo is the first person in his family to go to college. And if that's not enough, his website of his photography work has been viewed more than two and a half million times. Well, high school graduation is still a few days away. But today in Lowndes County, more than two dozen students heard their names called during an honor ceremony. The students were recognized for completing a two-year tech program at the Lowndes County Career Technical Center. Students received hands-on experience in a variety of career fields. The Ford's Foundation partnered with the Lowndes County School District to put on tonight's ceremony. Ford says the program is a great tool for those who are looking to jump straight into the workforce. We recruit them and just let them know that the college isn't for everybody. So if they want to stop right here, we'll, we'll accept them. Come, come work for us. Um, we're, all of us are looking for employees. Um, good employees and employees that have these skills. The students take academic classes at Caledonia, New Hope, and West Lowndes. Hundreds of public school students who receive free and reduced lunches during the school year won't have to worry about missing any meals this summer. That's because a shipment of food from the Mid-South Bank arrived in Tupelo for the program known as Breakbox. It provides food boxes for students in pre-K through 12th grades. Now, the food will be distributed all throughout the summer to the students' families to help them ensure that, that they have lunches all throughout the, the summer. One of the things that we've heard that's probably the hardest thing for us to hear is for a child to say, you know, we ask, why are you hungry? And they would, some of the response has been, because it wasn't my turn to eat last night. And it's a difficult thing to hear, and, and there's no need for that to be the case here where we live in Mississippi. Now, Martin says the break box program is about $20,000 short when it comes to purchasing all of the food needed for this initiative. Well, thanks to all the river. heavy rain headed our way. We do have a flash flood watching effect. That runs until 7 p.m. on your Saturday night. Those showers are going to last on through your Sunday morning. Coming up after the break, I'll let you know when we can see those strongest storms arrive in our area. UCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with meteorologist Jacob Riley. It's really a nasty night in downtown Louisville, Mississippi. No rain out there, but it's really foggy out there due to all the rain that we saw earlier today. It's not bad in terms of temperatures currently sitting in the 60s across the region. Here's that rain earlier today pulled on through our area, pushed on off to our south and east. But we are going to be looking back towards the state of Texas and Louisiana. That's where some more development is occurring that's going to head our way. We've already seen well over two inches of rain in a good chunk of the area, up closer to an inch, uh, northern portions of our area and eastern portions of our area. And over the next couple of days, we're going to see a few more inches of rain. That's why the National Weather Service has issued this flash flood watch in all of the green counties here. That runs through 7 p.m. on Saturday. So if you do cross the flooded roadway, please turn around. Don't drown. Don't drive through those flooded areas. As we go throughout the rest of your night tonight, those clouds sticking around, we're going to begin to notice some more of those rain showers begin to pop as we head into the early morning hours there of Friday. As we get a little closer to noon, get a little warmer in the day, that is going to give some more fuel for these strong storms to pull on through our area around noon for your Friday. Some of these could produce some gusty winds across the area. 
Those things will continue to pull on off to the east Friday evening, giving us a little bit of a break. Going to see another round move through later Friday. That's kind of the nature of the beast. That's what we've seen over the past. That's what we saw today, and that's going to be the pattern for the next couple of days. The National Weather or the Storm Prediction Center has put out a level one area of severe storms for your Friday. Really not a big concern, but again, we could see a few gusty winds with some of these storms. For your Friday, it's going to be cooler thanks to that rain topping out in the middle to upper 70s. Wouldn't be surprised if we stayed a little cooler than that, depending on how much rain we see. Speaking of rain this weekend, we've seen a lot of rain over all of the weekend so far in 2019. 56 percent of the weekend so far in Columbus have seen rain 67 in Tupelo and look at those rainfall totals well over 10 inches in both cities. Now as we head on into your Saturday the stationary front that's been bringing us this rain finally going to begin to lift on out of our area. It's going to keep those rain chances in the forecast through Sunday morning but as we go into Sunday evening you begin to see that taper off. High pressure is going to build in from the west bringing in some more sinking air, allowing for that rain to not be able to redevelop, giving us some more sunshine later in the week. So forecast rainfall totals there closer to five inches across southern portions of our area. Monday and Tuesday, that sunshine is going to return. And you'll notice that with your seven-day forecast here. Sunshine there quitting Monday and Tuesday before some more showers on Wednesday and Thursday. Baseball and softball championships are on the schedule, but Mother Nature didn't get that memo. We find out who's playing and who's not, coming up a little later in sports. Welcome back. Well, as the old saying goes, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. In some cases, that can be true for high blood pressure. We take a look at some of the things you can control in tonight's Health Talk with Baptist. Prevention and treatment of high blood pressure. How can you prevent high blood pressure? Healthy lifestyle choices are essential for the prevention and management of high blood pressure. There are eight ways that you can control your blood pressure. Eat a better diet, which may include reducing your salt intake. Enjoy regular physical activity. Maintain a healthy weight. Manage stress. Avoid tobacco smoke. Comply with medication prescriptions. If you drink, limit alcohol and understand hot tub safety. Adopting a healthy lifestyle is critical for the prevention of high blood pressure and an indispensable part of managing it. By doing so, you can prevent high blood pressure, prevent or delay the development of the disease, enhance the effectiveness of blood pressure medicines, and lower your risk of a heart attack, heart disease, stroke, or kidney disease. Be informed. More than 30% of people with high blood pressure are unaware they have it. Are you one of them? If you don't know your number, see a healthcare professional. Of those who know they have high blood pressure, almost 31% are not currently under treatment, even though they know their blood pressure is high. There is no healthy level of high blood pressure. Join us next time for Health Talk with Baptist. Mail your topic suggestions to Health Talk at WCBI.com. Health Talk has been brought to you by Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. Well, Mother Nature couldn't stop every game from being played on Thursday. The show must go on. Highlights from New Hope and Ecru next in sports. Sports with Tom Apple. Mother Nature wreaked havoc on high school sports, postponements, rescheduling, all the things we don't like. In high school baseball, North Half Championships, only two survived the weather on Thursday. The 4A North Half Championship, one of those, Pontotoc taking on the New Hope Trojans. Peyton Springfield on the mound for New Hope, cooking with propane, strikes out the side in the first. He'd strike out six of his first seven batters faced, and the man would give himself 
Some run support already up one nothing. Springfield slaps one to deep right center field. That gets down. Tyler Murphy hard charging from second. Gets the call to get on home, and he would do just that. Maybe a two RBI double for Springfield. New Hope up 4 0 after one. And in the second, it's Murphy's turn. Laser beam to left field. Hayes Lumsden would score, and Murphy would turn it into a triple. And he would love all of that. Show off, big fella. 5 0 New Hope. Ponatok would put on a furious rally, scoring six runs in the top of the fifth. But the Trojans shut the door. 7 to 6, New Hope wins, taking a 1 0 series lead. North Pontotoc and Boonville facing off in the 3 A North half final. Bags loaded for the Vikings. Ethan Dyer delivers. Hits one deep enough. It'd be a sack fly that would score Hayes Malone, so it's 1 0 V Man. Then Ty Roberson with a base hit down the first base line. Anthony scores, and it's 2 0 Vikings. And just when you thought they were done, Braxton Southerth with the bag still full. It would go off the wall. I don't know how this one stays inside the yard, but that would clear the bases. 5 0 North Pontotoc. They tack on two more. Vikings dominate game one, 7 to nothing. 4 A softball title game at Mississippi State, Newton County taking on Tish County. Tie game in the bottom of the second, no more. Riley Bearden through the five hole. That's going to score Maddie McNatt. And that would break the tie. Lady Braves up 3 to 2. But then, top of the six, Lady Cougars down 4 to 2. Lizzie Hollingsworth knocks ball short left center, plating Shelby Anderson. It's a 1 1 ball game. And in the top of the seventh, Newton County. Landry Amos sends one to deep left center field. It gets beyond the outfield. Newton County able to rally, scoring two in the top of the seventh. That would give them a 5 4 win. Game two coming up Friday at 4 p.m. At Southern Miss, everything got canceled today. Mother Nature winning the day in Hattiesburg. So that's going to change the entire schedule for the 1A, 3A, 5A state championships. The MHSAA and coaches agreeing the best course of action is move it to next week. Monday and Tuesday will be game one and game two of all of these series. Smithville versus Vardaman, that's the 130 first pitch on Monday. South Pontotoc and Choctaw Central at 4 p.m. Neshoba Central and Wayne County, that's the final first pitch of the day at 6.30. Then the games on Tuesday, 1A will begin the day at 10 a.m with each game following 30 minutes after the next. So after Smithville and Vardaman, 30 minutes after means South Pontotoc taking on Choctaw Central. Let's hope we get some softball in on Monday because we couldn't do it today. But beating the weather today, Ole Miss defeats Mississippi State in the first round of the SEC softball tournament 9-4. to Abby Latham, the hero for the Rebels, a grand slam in the bottom of the fourth, propelled a comeback for the Rebels. She also set a new program record for RBIs in a season. The Rebels advanced to face Kentucky at 10 a.m. on Friday. Ole Miss linebacker Kivante Ruggs has entered his name into the NCAA transfer portal. AL.com's Matt Zenitz is the first to report. Ruggs was suspended during the spring for an unspecified reason. Ruggs started three games as a freshman for Ole Miss, recording 16 tackles. A pair of Vernon Bulldogs making the decision that it's not time to hang up their bats just yet. Vernon C.J. Wise and Dalton Event signing on the dotted line to continue their student athlete careers with MUW Baseball. The future Owls, hell, they'll be teammates. Heck, they'll be teammates again. And they, they say it's a big testament to their work. Go over to our website, WCBI.com, to hear from both of the newest members of MUW Baseball. That's it for sports. Let's see if weather is next. Looks like we're going to have to deal with some more showers and storms as we head on through your Friday and Saturday. A few of those could be on the strong side. Sunday, though, that Sunday morning, that's when we're going to see those showers and storms continue. Sunday afternoon, though, Quint, we may see a few breaks in the clouds and the sunshine really staying around for your Monday and Tuesday. Man, I should have enjoyed this sunshine while we had earlier in the week because yes, we I'm got rain it. this weekend. Yeah, rain this weekend. Flash flood watch till Saturday at 7. So. That's unfortunate. Thanks for tuning in with us. Have a good night.